Whenever I think of Gavin, the first word that would come to mind would have to be selfless. There was never a moment, even when he was sick on the worst days, where he would make it about himself. Um, Gavin was one of the most amazing people I ever met. <laughs> That's like the bottom line thing that I have to say. He was just like an all around, like you talk to him, he would talk back, like he's a funny guy. You crack a joke, he'll laugh. Gavin was really optimistic. He was really caring. He was outgoing. Fun person. He was a loving person. Very easy to get along with. Always himself, no matter how emotionally or physically burnt out he was. Just love people. He loved hanging out with his friends. Real firm believer in doing everybody right and always wanting to do the right thing. He was the best friend anyone could ever ask for. Honestly. Well, we took Gavin, um, his mother was concerned with some marks on his back and stuff. We didn't really know what it was or what had happened. Um, one day, um, his brother had hit him in the leg with a shoehorn and just playing around. And Gavin didn't feel it. Like, there was nothing there. Like, he was just, and I, it really weirded me out. So I mentioned it to Jennifer and just a couple other things like that. And we ended up taking him to the hospital and they first diagnosed him with a, a Bell's palsy and then another doctor came in and wanted to do further um, evaluation so they did an MRI and come back and they told us that he had DIPG which is a diffuse intrinsic pontiglioma. It's a, a brain tumor which is located in the stem of your brain and it's in a position where it can't be removed surgically without a lot of damage being done or release um, that toxin or whatever you want to call it, bacteria into the bloodstream, which would cause problems anyway. One of Gavin's hardest moments would be whenever he got the news, obviously, that he had that. And I think it was just an initial shock to everyone because not many people get told that they have cancer at, you know, 14. They didn't stay warm sometimes. They didn't stay warm sometimes. What most people would do is just kind of give up and kind of lay it out, not do much, and probably try to save their body, their energy, and, you know, try to stay longer. Maybe that would be a way. But Gavin was more. This ain't got me, I've got this, you know, I'll beat this, and I'm gonna do what I wanna do. So he started doing things he wanted to do. Everything really changed, but he still was the kind, caring, happy soul. He just had more things that were painting. Why is he spazzing out? <laughs> Did I lose him? He wanted to make sure everybody was okay, and he wanted everybody to cherish their moments. He made the best out of everything, in every moment. <laughs> Many people were um, mean to him growing up, and whenever he got diagnosed, obviously, the meanness changed. That's how people are. But instead of getting upset or mad about that, he took all of that in and just turned it into love. The hold in part is just that he didn't want to share that with somebody because he didn't feel like bringing you down. He wanted nobody to feel any pain he was feeling. So he meditated and it brought him ease and comfort. He, he had a lot of people, like a big platform towards like the end because a lot of people were supporting him and being there for him. Gavin Ward is a 16 year old fighting DIPG. I could not hear anything else. Using this ability to get you know, a different message. It blew up, uh, it was a very big deal. Everybody just like kind of knew about him. He got this game, it was the game actually that he got out there and affected everybody. I wouldn't make my own game. I would like, I don't know. 
Yeah, that would be all. All of a sudden, like online, you got all these kids playing the game, all these grown-ups playing the game, and like you got these kids in the hospitals playing the game, and it just blew up. Hey, Gavin, it's Brian Tyler. I'm the composer for the music for the films of Fast and Furious. I can't wait to try the game. It looks amazing. We're all rooting for you. Wanted to uh, give you my best, and then I'm thinking about you. But with that video game came out Gavin's voice. Don't. Oh. Came out. He like talked about his story on Facebook, on news channels, on Instagram. Like the, the message he spread was amazing. He just wanted people to live life to the fullest. Like he aimed to inspire to find the love of God. He aimed to inspire to find happiness, to be with your family, to value your family, value your time. Happiness and kindness, positivity. And here I am. This is what I'm capable of doing. You're just as good too, and you can do just as much as I can. I want to be out there because my word is really important. It was all about loving somebody for any reason they could find and holding on to that reason. God was so evident in his life. He said, I might be the chosen one to spread the word. That is why God has already chosen my faith because it's for the best. You wouldn't think he'd be praying for the things that you think you'd pray for. like make me be better or nothing like that. It was always for other things. I think what made it so special is that he actually meant it. Like a lot of people will say all this stuff and they don't really mean any of it. But like, he actually meant everything that he said and everything. So everybody would trust in what he had to say because his voice was everything. Always keep in my mindset of having something to do the next night. If you go to bed without thinking of tomorrow, most of the time you'll meet you tomorrow. <laughs> the hardest thing Gavin ever dealt with is what his mom was going to experience after he passed. That was all Gavin's worries was. He didn't worry or feel what he did feel. He didn't even take the time to feel it because he was worried about her. Really, he loved his mother. I would say his toughest moment was his last few days. Um, a few days before he passed away, he had a car show. And the night before that, he was having seizures. And he was very, very sick. But he still showed up to see his cars, of course. Now at 11, a final lap for Gavin. Now we first told you about 16 year old Gavin Ward just this Wednesday. He suffered from DIPG, a rare form of brain cancer. We hate to tell you this, but this morning his family announced that he had passed away. Hours after his death, the local car community tells us his story is only beginning. Uh, WCPO 9 News reporter Jake Wild. Gavin's uh, voice, it will never be forgotten. I will never forget Gavin. I'm pretty sure most people won't forget him either. The likes and the shares and everything that he gets, I think that it helps other people. Like, it's really, I see a lot of people get united over Gavin. People I had no idea even existed. I am bonding with them over Gavin and what a fabulous, amazing person that he was. James, the individual who helped me build the game, He's always spreading his word. He's always uh, putting him out there. His little saying, have hope, I think it does give people hope and it brings more people together. He's like kind of a household name around here. Like everybody was telling their parents about it whenever it first happened and asking people to donate. They just raised $599,000 for the Cure Starts Now for funding. So he's still, he's still making it different. So that's really cool. He was part of that. Generally speaking, everybody is affected that even came in contact with Gavin. I no longer worry about the little things in life that I used to, and I cherish things more in my family more. I feel like his story made me better as a person, as a friend, as a son. There really isn't a day that I don't think about it or reflect on it. My dad and me would always talk about how 
we could never even imagine being as strong or as wise as this 16 year old boy was. Like my dad would cry talking about Gavin as how strong and smart and kind. I believe that it has changed me in ways that I never thought that I could be changed. Now, instead of thinking about myself, I think about other people a lot because it really showed me, opened my eyes that everyone has a story and everyone is going through something that you have no idea of. And he just always taught me to be the bigger person, to be the better person, and just to love everybody because that's what he wanted for everyone. He wanted people to love everyone and for everyone to be happy. I just felt like I could tell him anything with no judgment. So I try to be that person for other people now. I never knew if I was going to be alone at lunch or if I would have my friend. It depended if she showed up for school. So, But the one person I always knew would be at lunch was Gavin because no matter who he had to sit by, no matter how many options of people, no matter his whole table of friend group, that like he sat with, he went out of his way to leave that table and go sit alone with me at lunch every single day because that's just the type of person that he was and he was a fabulous friend. He always thought about me and all of his other friends. I remember one of the days he was having the worst headache ever and he was getting extremely sick and I went over there and the lights weren't on and he was just laying in bed and he kept saying, I'm fine, I'm fine are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. But it was just the type of person he is. He would always just think of other people and never think of himself. The cancer didn't beat Gavin like, at all. Like, you would never even know. Uh, it was more of woke up and Gavin wasn't here. And it was strange, it was odd, it was different still different. I don't know how to feel about it or nothing, but I know that uh, he didn't struggle with that at all. I think the biggest thing for all of us is just understanding to appreciate everything around you more than you normally would, just because everything to him was so valuable. The smallest thing that meant nothing to a normal person was everything to Gavin. So inspiration comes with just growing as an individual. And I think that's just across the board. Don't take anything for granted and you have to keep your faith and have hope. And always stay strong in whatever you're doing and no matter what you're going through, always worry about what the other person is doing across the street from you. So it's not about you, it's always about everybody else. And as far as the way he beat it was just acting like he was a normal kid without any problem. He definitely did not let DOPG <laughs> define no, him whatsoever. Not at all, not at all. That's a spiritual, lovable human being. That's it. It's Gavin. <laughs>